Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing something different. I'm reacting to some Twitter drama, which is always fun. Who doesn't love a little bit of Twitter drama for your day? Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at my recent situation with gold, which I've been kind of wrong in my recent idea of thinking gold could push higher. But today we're going to be talking about uh, some of the critiques that I've gotten, uh, and specifically this comment from Jamal FX, whose content I actually like on Twitter. So I just want to get out in front of this and just say I'm not here to like spread beef for no reason, uh, but I do want to respond to his comments. So let's dive right into it. I said I've made videos and shared my opinions on the market since 2018, and I've been wrong plenty of times. Unfortunately, there is a stigma on social media that profitable traders are market gods and never get it wrong. However, profitable trading isn't about winning every trade, it's about winning more than you lose. Just remember that every strategy, every approach, every setup, and every trader you watch on social media, by the way, has plenty of times where their setup does not work out as planned. In regards to my current position on gold, I may take a loss on gold if it breaks the 2300 level, but that exact same setup has led me to having a very green year so far in 2024. Uh, I've had a lot more wins than I have had losses on gold, and I've traded a lot of the rally. My fundamental analysis on gold has made me very bullish thinking that we could see rate cuts this year, but recently some dollar strength has really pushed back on my idea of being bullish on gold. That being said, I just want to show you, I'm not trying to defend this entry. I was definitely too early with my entry here. I caught this long here, price moved in my favor, and then I trailed out when it kind of failed on the lower time frames, then decided to jump back in, thinking that we would see some sort of like four hour bounce off of the support zone. I was wrong, price has come down, and while I'm still in the trade at the time of recording this video, I wouldn't be surprised if we break through those lows, uh, and, and you know, if if one of the news events this week, like GDP figures, or um, you know, we have PCE on Friday, if any of their uh, any of those events have significant volatility, it's very possible that I get stopped out of this trade if something continues to strengthen the dollar from here. That being said, I'm not defending whether or not this trade was right or wrong to take, but I want to react to the comments that I got on my post. I finished out by saying, don't let these sorts of thoughts convince you that profitable trading means never losing because profitable trading is all about being a good loser and keeping it under control. Nobody is exempt from losses, drawdowns, and periods of losing streaks. So let's get into Jamal's comment in response uh, to this. He says, I honestly don't think it's because market guys never get it wrong. There were so many indicators that would tell you not to buy gold at all time high levels. Even with basic trading principles, you don't buy high, you sell high and buy low. Especially with CFD contracts, buying gold at 2300 or above is just way too high based on technical levels. This loss was 100% avoidable. So I wanted to, first of all, just kind of break this down. And again, I want to reiterate that I've seen some of Jamal's content and I think it's actually pretty good. So I'm not here to um, tell you that, you know, everything you say is 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 you know pointless or, or not a good point here. But I do want to just kind of check some of these ideas. First of all, there were so many indicators that would tell you not to buy gold at all time high levels. In true actuality, on a nominal basis, we are near all time high levels. But on actual inflation adjusted levels, we are not near gold's all time high. In fact, let me show you. So when we look at the inflation adjusted gold price adjusted to today's dollars, the actual all time high for gold is well in the 2500s, back in the 1970s, 1980s. And also this recent, you know, or more recent uh, ginormous metals market boom in 2011 into 2012, um, the high was in the 2500s as well when adjusting gold's price for inflation. So to say that we are at all time highs currently or near them is maybe true, but really gold is something that over the long stretch should reach all time highs as they print more dollars year over year, but there's a finite amount of gold in the world. So my point with getting at that is if you're talking about gold being you know, super high, it's kind of relative. If you're talking about the true value of gold relative to dollars, I think gold has much, much more upside and I wouldn't be alone in thinking that. In fact, I'm definitely not alone in thinking that. You know, when you say, you know, who would be buying up here? Well, institutional money. Uh, the commitment of traders data produced by the CFTC uh, weekly report shows net positioning of institutional money. These are hedge funds and banks that are reporting 
have huge long exposure to gold right now. And the reason I point that out is to kind of write, write it off as this was 100% avoidable to be wrong on some downside on gold, I think is a little bit uh, a little bit confident to say the very least. This bit here with buying gold at 2300 or above is just way too high based on technical levels. I mean, maybe you could make that case, and obviously with hindsight in your favor, it is very easy to say, well, that was too high to buy it there. And you know, if it goes up from here, you'll say, well, that was too low to be shorting it here. You don't short the low, right? Uh, hindsight is a dangerous thing because, again, what may look high today, I promise you with, with very strong uh, probability that in 10 years from now, this will look like a very cheap price. Now, obviously, we're traders here, so I'm not talking about like 10 years out. But even still, this is a key level of support and there's pretty much, if you look at like technical analysis by people all over the world, everyone's got this level marked. So, you know, to say that this is not support and that there's no technical setup whatsoever, I think is a little bit subjective. Sometimes in these markets, people are so stuck in their beliefs that they don't adjust or listen to others giving them a heads up. But hey, you lose money, I make money. I'm not here to convince anyone not to sell or buy. If you believe in your analysis, you have to accept the outcomes that come with it. Okay. I get that, and if you left it there, then I'd say, hey, you know what, in this case, yeah, you made money, I lost money in this environment, uh, or in this circumstance, um, but again, over the last six months, 12 months, I've had a lot of profitable trades on gold using the exact same setup that cost me some money on this one. However, he goes one further, and he says that trade on gold, that loss was 100% avoidable. <clears throat> and I have a huge issue with this statement because this makes a dangerous assumption about the way markets actually operate. Nothing in financial markets is 100% avoidable, guaranteed, etc. Now, I guess on a technical basis, if you never took a trade again, then the losses would be 100% avoidable. But that is the only instance in which a loss is ever 100% guaranteed to be avoidable is if you did not take a trade whatsoever for the rest of your life. But to say that that loss was 100% avoidable, well, what about this? What about if you typed this out and overnight something catastrophic happened in Asia or the Middle East or Eastern Europe that no one could have possibly seen coming? Again, 100% avoidable is, you know, again, just a, a foolish statement in my opinion, to be completely honest. Nothing is 100% guaranteed in the financial markets. And, uh, you know, again, when you take a trade, if you have a stop loss on your trade, you have to accept that it could get hit, meaning you don't have 100 certainty about anything. You could have, again, my pet peeve word right there, could have taken the small profit you made on the run because resistance had formed and it wasn't breaking. Yes, but again, hindsight is a dangerous thing. Now, Jamal, uh, if you're listening to this video, I'm absolutely not trying to start beef, but I do ask one thing of you. If you've got such a strong conviction about being so right about uh, markets and, and you know thinking that there is no way to, uh, or that, that it was so obvious to not take this trade, I would love if you mirror what I try and do on my channel, which is I lo log in live to my brokerage accounts regularly and I share my personal trading performance. Um, I'd love if you're if you're very confident you want to respond to this, please do the same. I'd love to see it. If you've got a couple years of track record, if you could log into your brokerage and show us, I would absolutely retract all of this stuff that I'm saying and I'd uh, totally take the video down and apologize to you. But I think you're wrong. I think that when it comes to talking about um, you know, certainties in the markets or uh, telling someone that their, their trade was just an obvious thing to not do is kind of foolish because, you know, it's the same reason why uh, sometimes people get into the beef about like smart money concepts, right? That's a very topic, a very controversial topic. But I would never, uh, because I don't know everything in the entire world, tell people who trade with that sort of style that there's no possible way for them to actually make money. Because it is possible that somebody out there using those sorts of concepts uh, has found success. And I imagine there are people who have found success with all sorts of different strategies. There's people who don't just buy low, sell high, or trade mean reversion. There's people who trade momentum. And if you had traded here, these were all new highs. And during these new highs, you could have made a lot of money if you were a momentum trader and you still managed your risk. So to say again, that it's so obvious not to trade a certain level or not to do certain things, I think is a foolish thing. Now, again, if I stop out of this trade, I've still made a lot of money this year trading gold with the same signal that got me into this trade. 
I'm not changing what I'm doing day to day, week to week. I've done the same thing for years. And again, this particular instance didn't work out. And it's very easy to point fingers when something doesn't work out. And I typically get most of my hate comments when one of my strategies uh, or one of my entries in my strategy doesn't quite work out. Uh, and then they go quiet when things go well. But over the long term, I've been profitable using the same strategy. And so what you have to accept is that there is reasons for me to take that trade. I had a good baseline reason for taking that trade, you may not have agreed with it and your strategy might have told you differently. And in that case, you made money, then awesome. But I'm not here to dispute whether or not my strategy is worthwhile. My argument would be for people who are listening, who see these sorts of comments, don't listen to that sort of thing like, oh, this was obvious not to take that trade. Because what that leads you to do is switch strategies every week and then wonder when something goes wrong, you know, is it the strategy? Do I need to bail on this? And it ends up being the turn, uh, you know, turning wheel of the, uh, the the cycle of doom, if you will, for traders, which is changing strategies constantly, you know, getting tilted and getting frustrated, um, and you know, making dumb decisions. So I just wanted to make this quick video, a little bit of a uh, you know, a ramble for you, uh, for your your morning or afternoon, wherever you're watching this. Uh, I hope it was helpful to you. Again, I'm really not trying to to start uh, beef, but I do when I see these sorts of comments. I think they're good learning opportunities. And um, you know, I, I've done what I've done for a number of years and I imagine Jamal has too. So I'm not here to tell him uh, that his strategy is not working, but if you're going to tell other people that what they've done is foolish or uh, you know, not it was obvious not to take those trades kind of thing, I would totally ask that you log into your brokerage on camera, pull it up on a live stream and show us. And I would absolutely retract everything I've said. Um, if you can do that and show us you know, long-term profitability that beats the S&P 500, then by all means, um, maybe you're right and I'm just completely wrong and I'll come learn from you. Anyways, thanks very much for watching this video uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. US Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here and we'll see you there.